All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us and guided us to the truth and to Islam and has given us countless blessings that if we try to account for, we would never finish them. So today, inshallah, we'll uh, continue our discussion about prayer. Uh, last week, we, we talked about prayer for the from the perspective that it was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was very special that the Prophet ﷺ had to go himself and receive it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the journey of the Isra and Mi'raj. And we uh, we shared some of the, the blessings and the benefits of prayer and how it's um, it's connected to Tawheed. By us praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a manifestation of our belief in Tawheed al uluhiyyah the singling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our actions as worshippers, right? That's the whole concept of Tawheed al ubudiyah is to single him by our actions. And the best action that any human being can do is what is his prayer. As the hadith says, uh, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and asked him, what, did, what is the best deed anyone can do? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ala praying on time. Uh, the man then said, Thumma'ay. Then what after that? The Prophet ﷺ responded, he said, Birul walidain, being righteous to the parents. Then the man replied and he said, Thumma'ay. The Prophet ﷺ answer was, Al jihadu fi sabilillah, fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was um, narrated through Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So it is um, the best thing that any person can do. If, if we got free time, especially at night, uh, the best thing we can do is get up and pray a couple of rakahs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been so gracious with us that he gave us five opportunities a day to connect with him, right? And they have very prescribed times and he changes the times throughout the year so we don't get, you know, bored from the same, um, you know, time doing the same thing. But no, over the seasons, the time changes so that we have uh, a variant. But it's it's a grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow a creature to connect with its creator. And he gave us that special uh, grace through the five prayers where we have no concern to go and pray to Allah to connect with him, right? Uh, so we have those five opportunities and it doesn't stop there. The Prophet وسلم, taught us extra prayers that we can do, the sunnah prayers before Fajr, you know, before and after Dhuhr, uh, you know, sometimes before Asr, and then after Maghrib and after Isha, and then the night is open. It's an open ticket. You can pray as many rakahs as you want until Fajr. So that is a huge blessing. Uh, today, inshallah, we'll talk about some of the blessings of Qiyam al praying at night. As the hadith says, uh, pray while people are sleeping, you will enter Jannah in peace, right? Uh, referring to the night prayer. Uh, this ayah here from Surat al dhariyat uh, I'll see if anyone wants to read it, inshallah, then we'll explain it. So anyone would like to read ayah 16 and 17 from al dhariyat So what, is, what do these two ayat mean? It's describing people who um, their sides are, are staying away from their beds. In other words, they don't, they don't sleep at night. These are people who they prefer instead of having their sides, you know, we sleep on our right side. Instead of having their sides relax in their beds, they prefer that their sides are calling their bodies are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمْعًا They're calling upon their Lord in fear and in hopes. Fearful from Allah's disappointment or Allah's punishment, but also hopeful in Allah's mercy and Allah's compassion and Allah's forgiveness. And they give from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided them, whether it's wealth or knowledge or physical strength or whatever it is, they, they give back. But usually, uh, you know, the ayah is, is general here, but usually it's also referring to wealth in, in general because wealth, holding on to wealth is something that's so um, 
strong for human beings. It's so difficult to give away from our wealth for, for most people, generally speaking. So these people, their bodies are shunning their beds. They're, they're preferring to stay up at night to pray. And the next ayah says what? A soul does not know what has been prepared for it if you remember, uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned salah as what? As the coolness of his eyes. It's the thing that makes him feel chill, right? And here, ayun, the same two words are, are in this ayah. Uh, a soul does not know or cannot imagine what has been prepared for it from the, the cool things as a reward for, for what they have been doing in that past life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words is saying, those who stay up at night to pray, they have no idea what good rewards Allah has prepared for them in the hereafter. Meaning the reward is so great. It's it's a it's a special reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives these, these people. All right. So that's a, a couple of things here. First of all, uh, looking at the first ayah, yad'una rabbahum. They call upon whom? They call upon their Lord, right? What does this tell you guys? What does the Lord do? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used the word Rabbahum. He didn't say Yad'un Allah. He could have, you know, said that in the ayah. What's the, what's the significance of using the word Rabb rather than Allah, for, for example? Who can uh, give us some thoughts here? Omar, what are your thoughts? Assalamu alaikum first. All right, so moving on to the next ayah. A soul does not know what has been kept hidden from them as a reward, a reward that makes them so happy. It's the coolness of their eyes because of what they did in the previous life, right? Because what they did, knowing and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his promise is the truth. They did it with confidence that, yeah, we're getting up and we're praying and we're making this dua. And we're also confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer our dua because that's a promise from him. All right, let's go on and look at another uh, ayah here. This actually title is not entirely correct. Uh, so we'll say here another benefit of Qiyam al-Layl. So who would like to read this for us? Very infrequently at night sleeping, right? Or they did not sleep you know, the whole night. There were parts of the night they would get up and pray. So uh, these two ayat, again, to summarize, it focuses on confirm, confirming that these muttaqeen people who are God conscious, who are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mindful of the do's and don'ts, they are dwelling in gardens and springs in the hereafter, leveraging and benefiting from what their Lord has given them because they were people who would do uh, not only good deeds in this life, but they would perfect these good deeds. And an example of how they would perfect is they would perfect their salah. And how do they perfect their salah? Is not only they pray the five prayers on time and they pray the sunnah, but also at night they would get up a little bit and pray. Not necessarily the entire night, but they would pray, you know, throughout the night. And it became a habit. قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ so this could mean either uh, very little of the night they would sleep, meaning they're up most of the night praying, sort of like what we do in Ramadan, or um, they would get up every night to pray a little bit, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that they're up the entire night, but the point here is that it's become part of them, that very infrequently would they sleep the, the whole night, you know, um, on a regular basis or the entire night. So that's an example of how we can reach a state of ihsan, right? We hear a lot that 
Allah loves the people who have taqwa. Allah loves the people who have ihsan. All right, but how can I reach a state of ihsan? Here's the answer. You want to reach a state of ihsan? You want to be among these people who have gardens? You want to be among the people who are forgiven? When Allah comes down every night, the last third of the night, and says, who's there to forgive? Who's asking me so I can give him? This is how you do it. You get up a little bit early before Fajr, half an hour, you pray a couple of, of rakahs. And if you do that consistently, you know, and as the Prophet said, said the best of deeds are those that are consistent, even if they're little. You don't have to get up two hours before Fajr and pray, you know, 21 rakahs every night. No, no one is saying that. But if you get up, let's say three, four nights a week or every other night or a couple of nights a week, but it becomes a habit. You do it every every week, you know, a couple of nights you get up, you pray two rakahs. And that becomes your characteristic. You're known as a man who gets up early and you pray a couple of extra rakahs when everyone else is still sleeping. That becomes part of your quality. And you become eligible for the description that the Prophet ﷺ gave to one of the Sahaba. He said, rajul. Indeed, he's one of the best men. Right? So that's the, the essence of these ayat, inshallah. The lesson that we can learn here is let's try to start a new habit of praying Qiyam al-Layl at night. You can do it early before Fajr, or you can, you know, before you go to sleep, if you're staying up late, you can also pray two rakahs with that intention that it's Qiyam al-Layl, inshallah. All right, guys, so we'll pause here, see if anyone has any questions.